So hello there everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be discussing um, everything from the trailer that was released. Um, this is one of the photos from the trailer. Um, first of all, I can't obviously show the music to the trailer because of copyright. But um, And also, um, because I want to show you the features as well. So link is in the, to the trailer is in the book is in the description below and also there's a link to the blog where you can find various stuff about what Cody's have to say about themselves but without a doubt um, let's get in to the trailer and see what it we, we can learn that we haven't already seen so Peggy 3 same as usual um, obviously new graphics for this year but whether or not it's actually new or if it makes an actual improvement it's it's all very good showing us this but until we get um to see it um on our on our consoles or pcs or whatever then um i'm afraid that we can't really pass judgment but i wanted to quickly mention a bit about the media obviously the media is coming back i've already covered this in the when it was announced and this bit of gameplay was shown in the developer diary but since then of course we've seen some people react to the interview questions and they are just too the time pressure isn't allowing for long enough um, yes the interviews are in a different location uh, I'll get I don't really mention about new locations really but um it's it's going to be a bit different just seeing the not it's it's rather than seeing the background of the circuit you're at which added variety you're just going to be stuck in an office which is boring so that is something that code masters have gone back on but yes the return of the media is a good thing but um the time pressured interviews are too short for let's say four questions four or five answers so You've got to read all of them and be able to make a decision in that time. So there we go. But yes, they're going to have these different locations, but for the media. But then you're not going to be able to interact afterwards. It's just going to go to cut screen. We've also got added profile um, creation, and the audio name is back. This was a feature that you could pick a nickname or something like that. Um, that you could pick a nickname or surname or whatever a list of surnames and they will p talk about you with that ultimately they never programmed it properly to so you'd hardly ever actually hear you say in the old games but now apparently um, if you pick a nickname or a surname um, when Crofty does his um, little story thing then um, you'll, when he's introducing the grid and you, instead of saying and a salva, he'll say and whatever name professor I think is was the scientist runs off the grid. But it'd be good because they got nicknames. If they gave if he used nicknames for the other drivers, but he doesn't. He says Hamilton is on pole instead of him. Vettel is in second instead of I don't know whatever nicknames they want. Hammer time. And it was hammer time for Lewis Hamilton, or something along those lines, just to add a little bit more variety. But again, they haven't got there yet um, with that. But you can ultimately everything else with personalization is exactly the same. It's just they're adding the audio name in. So yes, and um, also we we got the um, driver contract contracts, which I mentioned in another video already so if you haven't seen any of these videos already go and check them out in the video in the uh, playlist that's at the bottom of the description you can pick your arrival as well and I want to bring you to this screen now because this is a screen that we haven't seen before it, I, it shows your sort of respect and your sportsman slash showmanship slider after a particular race so this is clearly after you've done and you've done all the interviews for that race and then gets you the respect level, excuse me, um, 
that you already had. Um, so this is something. This is a good. Th this is an indicator on your new thing. So I imagine it will slide about. It should slide about rather than being just a static thing like it is now. But it should slide about or move up and down depending on your answer showing you where you were and where you've come to. So yes, yeah, so that's something interest so something good to see that they've actually implemented that um it actually shows you improvement rather than you having to look for it it gives you the screen showing you um where how gone you how um how much improvement that you've made at that particular race so yes and also uh ricardo and bottas there i don't i don't imagine they'll be ever seeing them. and obviously Ricardo's doing donuts at China. I don't know why. Obviously, team specific tech parts. We've already seen regulation changes. You've already seen the footage for that as well. But this is something interesting. R&D parts under threat has not been mentioned before. So actually, um, it will tell you that um, durability, especially um, the part over time that you've the, the new upgrade is under threat. So therefore you can adapt the part for some more resource points. And obviously somebody's wrapped up 55,000. So I imagine this is later on in the career mode. But it means that the R&D adapts over time and means that you need to adapt the part. Otherwise that part, that reliability is probably gone. A bit like uh, Renault. Reliability in Verstappen's and Ricardo's engines at the past couple of races. So that is something that's a little bit interesting that they didn't reveal before for the R and D. So yes, um, there we go. Keeping those, keeping on top of those parts. Twenty new classic cars. I've already covered a lot about classic cars already. Um, about the Braun, Williams, and then obviously the new seventies um, and early eighties classic cars. If you want to get the information all about that. As I said, there's, I did a full video on the Braum and the Williams car, and then also the other ones. Um, they say stunning visual updates, but um, sometimes it looks a bit the same as F1 2017, to be honest. Obviously, they've added some planes. Uh, so that's it. Our new circuits, Paul Ricard and Hockenheim are back in the game. Well, Paul Ricard was never in the game under Codemasters, as Hockenheim was. Um... They call it the most authentic. Well, I can't. I'm gonna not not let me out to judge on the suspension. They've changed the suspension so the curbs aren't as forgiving. Um, which is good. And they've added a tire carcass temperature as well, um, which I've discussed previously. Now, this is something that you wouldn't have seen before: the new multiplier license. You can see that people have got levels, and then they've got licenses as well. And there's also something called a safety racing, which you'll see in um, a um, in a moment about that, where you just it changes your safety racing, which comes which is all part of actually your multiplayer license. So um, yes, and also you got the vote. You can actually vote for the um, the next race, which is good because if you're a host of a lobby. And you don't know what to do with it, then um, clearly you're going to get the thing. Ultimately, safety racing is going to depend on how much lag there is, but um, you can compare yourself against drivers. Ultimately, watch yourself upgrade through the multiplayer. But if multiplayer is not stable, then there's going to be issues with it, such as everybody getting disqualified, stuff like that. Except you know what I mean. You. S those of you who don't know about multiplayer and how bad it used to be for F1 2017 come out and then just go and check what happened um, I've got videos in F1 2017 numerous ones on about having lag and about having um, I will do some more multiplayer races in a bit um, once I've got a little bit of the backlog of stuff and then I'll get some multiplayer races done um, uh, potentially at the weekend we'll have to wait and see about that 
so yes um, and there is that uh, player stats is the safety racing which you get um, upgrading then they got some more gameplay I, sus I suspect they want to probably tell you how that works in the next developer diary as I predicted from the in my previous video on F1 2018 which you guys smash the videos and the subscribers I just want to say a huge big thank you as the video ends um, so yes yeah, so that's the trailer that's really what we could have learned from it most of the other stuff we've actually seen before um, so as I said a bit more on the multiplayer side I think is going to come up in the next um, in the next um, in the next developer diary was the words I was looking for um, but I've already mentioned about that and I think then we'll see a little bit about personalization I'm going to update that prediction in the final one which um, but as they've released the trailer I doubt it will come this week now um, I think it will probably be next week and the week after with a week left to spare on um, to um, promote the game fully but they've got the trailer out now so they can promote the trailer um, and then they just got Lee Mather to talk about what he wants to do with uh, with uh, the game. But yes, I'm going to leave it there. If you've enjoyed, um, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new to see more F1 2018 gameplay as and when it gets released. Um, we'll be covering those final two developer dies when they come um, out. But until the next video, I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you so much for watching. And goodbye.